box. I mean, I have to clock in in 20 minutes. Wow. I'm just saying, because it's going to interrupt. Okay, I'm sorry. I just asked one question, and it could have been one year, and I said, okay. I don't know. I, you think I don't know that you clocked in at 12 o'clock? I'll just clock in late and I'll just leave my phone on. I'll clock in late, but I'll leave the phone on so in case a call does come. We'll do it in 15 minutes. Okay. 15 minutes. Well, I'm afraid I'll get called out and we won't be able to finish it, so let's just... We have 15 minutes before 12 o'clock. Either way, you won't be called out in 15 minutes. Well, what I'm saying is I'll just clock in late, okay? So let's use the time. But that was your issue before, honey. My issue before was stopping to turn the phone on. My issue was to stop and turn the phone on. So I, I solved it. I turned the phone on. I won't clock in. I won't stop to clock in. But if I get called, at least the phone is on. So I solved it myself. Our synergy is compromised, so I don't think this is gonna be a good one. I'm just saying. So what do you suggest? I don't know. I try, I'm trying to fix it and- uh, I don't know what else to say. I know, but I'm just saying it's, it's, it's been compromised, so. And again, I'm gonna apologize that if it came off wrong, it offended you, then I'm apologizing because I really thought you'd have been like, okay, let's go. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a dilemma because I don't know what to do when I'm dealing with my own anxiety about these kinds of situations. I don't know what to do. It's like, you took it, you took it personally. And it really was just me trying to deal with the anxiety that I'm going to run into this time that I'm needing to turn my phone on. That's all that was about, was about my anxiety. It wasn't about not answering your question. It was about my anxiety. about a spiritual component and I should never be surprised and when we have a message to share this Satan this is actually exactly what I'm talking about and that the enemy doesn't want a message to get out and that's how real this is so for us not to do it It just, it just feeds into the success of the attack. So we have to do it, it's not optional. Because there's a message that has to get across to these marriages and all the craziness that's happened in marriages, so we have to do it, it's not optional.
Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia, thank you for watching. Today's episode is entitled, one plus one equals three. One How plus can that be? So can we talk? <coughs> <laughs> what happened? My title caused you to choke? <coughs> As you know, Sonia comes up with these titles at the spur of the moment. We don't rehearse the title, so mm -hmm. that was good. Mm -hmm. How can it be that one plus one is three? Tell it's the like, people. It's like Jack in the Box. Mm -hmm. You turn that thing, you don't know when it's going to pop out, that mm -hmm. thing pops out. <laughs> One plus one equals three. So what does that mean? That means this. For the educators, you're saying one plus one does not equal three. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In the spiritual realm, one plus one equals three. If, if you look at your marriage, you say, well, why are we fighting? Why is this always happening? Why is this and why is that? And it doesn't make any sense. Well, it doesn't make any sense because your marriage is a spiritual institution. Mm -hmm. And when your marriage is a spiritual institution, then things that take place will be a spiritual event. Right. You know, the Bible talks about spiritual minds discern spiritual things. So just kind of put your mindset into that, that, that thinking. Put your spiritual hats on and say, okay, let me look at this from a spiritual perspective. We had a beef. Like, and I wouldn't call it beef. We had, it was about to get hot in the kitchen. And in fact, it was, it was serious. And Sonia's fasting. She's doing a 21 day Daniel fast. I'm doing a 40 day journey with the men, mm. um, refraining from a lot of things. And, and so those of you who actually gone on an experience in fasting, those things will come up and it's going to test everything that you have. Mm -hmm. And so, one plus one equals three is that we want you to be able to see things that don't make any sense from the spiritual realm. Well, and you first have to believe that there was a creator who created marriage. Um, if you don't believe that, just stop watching because nothing else we say is going to make sense. Right. But if you do believe that there was a creator that made heaven and earth and man and woman, then you know that God created marriage. And we always go back to the creator with anything. If you have a vehicle and it's a Ford or a Lexus or a BMW and it needs to be serviced, you're going back to the manufacturer. Right. So we believe that you got to do the same thing with marriages. And one of the reasons that a lot of marriages are failing is because we're trying to self-fix. I can't fix my car. I got to take that thing back to the manufacturer. And some of us will not go back to the creator to find out how he intended marriage to, we to be and how how he expected it to work. So a lot of the times marriages are stuck because they don't go back to find out, well, what did God intend for marriage? What was the purpose of marriage? Um, why did he create marriage? Why did he create a man? Why did he create a woman? Right. Why are they built differently? Why do they look differently? What are the responsibilities? What are the responsibilities? <laughs> and then we, yeah. and if you believe that there is a creator that created marriage, then you know there's an enemy who hates the creator. And if you know there's an enemy who hates the creator, he usually hates what the creator creates. He usually hates what the creator creates. Mm -hmm. He usually hates what the creator creates. Which is marriage. I said that three times for emphasis. Which and it rhymes marriage. too, by the way. Which is marriage. Mm -hmm. So if he hates marriages, mm. then what do you think? He's doing to you. He's doing to you. And, and you to think us. that he's the enemy because uh, about 10, 20 minutes ago, he did kind of come off like he was the enemy. I wanted to punch him right in the face. He's getting on my nerves so bad. <laughs> that was the enemy, though. See, I had to rebuke Satan. I did, right? I rebuked him in the name of Jesus. And Jesus heard you because you didn't. I did. Want, I it did. did it didn't I, happen. Because <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you'd have been knocked out. <laughs> you would not. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! We, we're, we're digressing. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. We have movies that we just love to uh, enact the scene, reenact going, the scene. Going, going back to what Sonya said, it's it's so it's so deep, and and I think over the past probably five or six years, we finally got it. We finally understood. Mm -hmm. Who the real enemy is. Who the real enemy is and, and how to respond. 
and how to respond. And so we didn't get this into about five or six years. So what we've learned is that one plus one equals three, two different ways. It's either the creator, one plus one plus the creator of marriage is three with God in it. Or it's one plus one with Satan in it. And that's the, thir the third entity. Either way, there's a third entity. So our question to you is which one is your third entity? Is it the creator or is it Satan, the hater of the creator? And that's a sobering question, y'all, because a lot of the times marriages break up. There's a whole legacy and generation. Y'all have had kids mm -hmm. and grandkids and you decide we're done because you're unable to see how Satan sabotaged your marriage. And maybe he sabotaged it from the beginning and you didn't see it. And so it's building on hurt after yeah. hurt after hurt. But I promise you that if you actually pay attention to the spiritual warfare of your marriage, you'll see that a lot of it isn't you. A lot of it wasn't you. A lot of it wasn't him. A lot of it is a deception right. that Satan likes to give people who are married because he really doesn't want the marriage to last. The marriage is a representation of the creator. Mm. And a lot of people walk around in that disillusionment, deceived, thinking that it's that person. And it, and it becomes a trickle down effect on your children. It, become, it becomes and continues to become a generational curse. And that's the part that's deep because he would have started attacking your mama and father mm, long before you met your spouse so that you could be so jacked up by whatever didn't happen right with them that you can't get it right with him. Right. And Satan says, oh, let me start with the mama and the daddy. Let me give her some daddy issues. Let me give him some mama issues so that when you become an adult and you get married, you're jacked up. And so, but you've created some children and there goes the generational curse. So now you're repeating the cycle and your children are watching it or they're actually being exposed to some of the hurt by how you're parenting them. Right. And that becomes a generational curse. It becomes a generational cycle. And we see the pattern. We're therapists. We do the genealogies and we're like, oh, so wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. There's three generations of women who have done A, B, C, and D, and you're surprised that you're doing A, B, C, and D too? I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've seen that doing genealogy. In our own family, we've seen it. We had to come together, do our genealogy, and then pray over the curses that we saw in the history of our families and our ancestors. And Derek and I had to say, oh, snap. This is a propensity in our family. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a potential issue in this family. And then we had to say, okay, you know what? It ends in this generation. We're going to pray over our children. And that's why we pray over our children every night, especially the male seed, the male seed. I put my hands on my son every night and pray that generational curse is broken from him. Because when we looked at the men in our family and the decisions that some of them have made, Mm -hmm. Satan's coming after that. Next, he's done with our generation. He's on to the next one. You know why he's on to the next one? Because the millennial generation is a lot more, they're a lot more progressive. There's all kinds of opportunities and, and, and um, mediums for them to, to, to express themselves. Mm -hmm. We didn't have all of that. So he's like, I'm done with y'all. Let me go to the millennials. Right. And <laughs> I'm... I'm I stopped and paused when Sonia said she prays over our son. My prayer over my son is that don't I ask God not to give my sin or I ask God not to consequence or give my consequence onto my son. Mm. Um, because I want that generational curse to be broken and it has been. And mm -hmm. so I still pray over him for protection. But going back to what you said about this generation, they're, they're exposed to so much. You know, Satan will attack our marriage, but he's coming after our, our seed. Mm -hmm. He's coming after my girls. He's mm -hmm. coming after my son. He's coming after my two grandkids. And we don't have time to be arguing with, with each other mm -hmm. about 
directions or about <laughs> you said something mm -hmm. wrong to me or about because Satan wants to distract you and keep mm -hmm. you in that mm -hmm. place. We ain't talked for three days. We slept in different rooms mm -hmm. for five months. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a little bay and I got a little boo. I'm going to do me. I'm going to live my best life. Mm. Isn't that a song? I ain't going back and forth. <laughs> I ain't, I'm going to live my best life because I'm tired of this marriage and I'm not mm -hmm. going to get divorced. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get separated. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live my best life. I'm going to travel through the world, do mm -hmm. my thing. And the children and Satan sitting back with his imps. Mm -hmm. They get your best life on, do your thing. Mm -hmm. But then you got children mm -hmm. in the society that they're in. They're going to be exposed to all kinds of stuff that we know about. Yeah. And so, you know, the one plus one equals three requires you to go back to school. Mm. It requires mm. you to go back to spiritual school. Some people, I'm not talking to you, I'm just saying some, they got married for the wrong reasons. I need to get into this country. Mm. I need someone to make me feel better because my divorce, it was bad, so let me find somebody to, mm -hmm. to keep me warm at night. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of sleeping around, so let me find somebody. You know what, they, I can financially, we can do this thing here mm -hmm. and, and, and build, a, a, build a conglomerate mm -hmm. because we can do this. And the list goes on and on and no one, I should say no one, let me not make that general statement. Some don't understand when you stood before whomever you stood before, well, hopefully it was a pastor. Or a judge. Or a judge. Mm -hmm. and, and, and put that union, union together and said, this is deep. This is a spiritual institution that started back with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't changed. God has had specific instructions on marriage yeah. in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we have to go back to reading that and understanding that and understanding how, how do we deal with the things that we deal with, the arguments and the fights and the fuss mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. Well, there, there are things, if, if you understand it's a spiritual institution and it's an attack on marriages then you know the scripture that 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 jesus christ the disciples couldn't heal mm -hmm. oh boy mm -hmm. <laughs> and they said you know hey jesus we can't heal heal them we can't and cast the demons we can't out. cast the demons yeah, out the, the, the son who and had Je demons yeah and jesus said mm -hmm. You know, this kind comes mm -hmm. out through praying and fasting mm -hmm. and he had just finished praying and fasting so you know, he was able to cast the demons out of the boy. There's a formula for spiritual attack. So, you know, mm -hmm. this, this, Sonia and I talk a lot about the spiritual role of the husband and the spiritual role of the wife. We, I wish we had time. Maybe we need to do a part two. Yeah, we should. Because the we spiritual should. role of a husband is so, so significant mm -hmm. in battling the warfare. The spiritual role of the wife is so significant that once you understand it and you walk in it and you're around other married people who understand that, if I'm around other married men who understand their spiritual role, oh man, we're just like the 300. <laughs> you know, uh, 300, lap in the water. Mm. Oh, Gideon. Gideon, 300. Mm -hmm. You know, I just was reading it in the Bible about Abram. And he, when, when he went to go get Lot, it was 318. Mm -hmm. It's significant about there's a certain mm -hmm. amount of men who are together spiritually, mm -hmm. understanding their role as husbands. It's so deep. So I just mm -hmm. got to I got to That is deep. So what's in the boxes? Well, in this box, it's called Pandora's Box. These are all the things that... Distract us. Distracts us, can destroy our marriage. Mm -hmm. What's in the oh, box? Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Absolute. Mm -hmm. Vodka, 100 proof. But still, it's not, it's not empty. I mean, it's not, it's full. Mm. You so, know, this thing right here, this thing, I've seen how this has damaged and destroyed marriages because um, this is a numbing agent and the people that drink this all the time every day you know even heavy on the weekends it's to 
escape from something. And it usually will create a distance from their spouse, but also a false sense of reality. It's so that they won't feel. And a lot of the times there's pain associated with this. This is associated with pain, trying to numb it. You know, that's, that's, that's just one example of the things that relieve our pain and how Satan, again, we're talking about the spiritual um, attack on marriages. It goes through things like that. And you, that was you when, when I met you. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. That was me. It was, it was the dark liquor, but it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it almost killed me. Mm -hmm. It almost killed me. So... So that's just that's one example of the the spiritual attacks a vessel coming into your marriage. Um, a lot of anything anything that um, you're you're ingesting that is not natural for you, um, and that sometimes it's um, sleeping pills. You know why do you God promised us a sweet sleep sleep in Psalms eight I believe. Why are we needing to have help to sleep and why are we drinking to numb our pain and why some you know there's just different substances um pain medications and um different you know just substances that alter our thinking and our judgment just so that we can escape something that's hurting or just stop us from thinking so that you know we can go to sleep and if you are struggling with having to take anything to get through the day or the night then it's becoming a distraction to your marriage and you're not going to be able to fulfill your role fully because in that altered state the enemy will or will try to attack you so that again that's one example satan will present gifts to you that look nice and pretty hmm. and you want to open them just like it's christmas time mm -hmm. and and you have to discern what are those things and how much of a damage are play in your marriage Hmm. What are those things? Some things. Social media. Hmm. You got, let's see, you got Facebook, you got Instagram, you got LinkedIn, you got all these things can be a distraction. So they come in a nice box and, it's, and we're not knocking social media, we're just mm -hmm. saying that be careful of what it's masked. Be careful of how these things can look and, and be beneficial, but also be careful that these things can play a pivotal role in impacting the spiritual uh, relationship with you each know, other. You know, there are some people that can't even um, go the day, the, the morning without, you know, of course, checking your phone. You want to check your messages. We all do that. But um, there are some people, they have to see social media. They have to see who said what and when and mm -hmm. where, and it becomes an addiction. But what I thought was the most disturbing thing to see was when Derek and I go on dates and across from each other, there's a husband and wife and they're both in the phone. Mm. And I'm like, that's a straight up distraction. There's no more conversation about how was your day? What are your aspirations? What did I do that got on your nerves? What do I need forgiveness for? How are you feeling today? What's our plan emotionally and spiritually? Everybody's just in their phone. And I'm just like, we don't even talk anymore. So I mean, the phone, social media, the instant access to talking with other people has become a deception. Right. And it's, kill it's killing marriages. So if that's you, put your phone down, put your iPad down. Look at your spouse, look in their eyes, give them some time, talk to them. Find out what they need, find out how they're feeling, find out what's next, forgive, ask for forgiveness. I mean, just, just realize that those are the little things and just, that are wedging uh, marriages And marriages just have a apart. spiritual plan. For, I, I think, here's the thing, honey. The challenge for a lot of couples is that they don't know how to engage spiritually. I think, you know, reading the Bible, going to church and all those other things they do, but I think the challenge is how do I engage 
my spouse from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. So we've asked couples when they're in conflict, and we give counseling, but part of what we say is, can you pray for your husband? Mm -hmm. Oh, I ain't praying for him. Mm. What? <laughs> can you pray in silence? Mm. Can you go in your closet maybe? Mm. Can you pray for your wife? I ain't praying for that heifer, I mean that woman. <laughs> I'm not for what she and so the 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 understanding about the spiritual the spiritual significance in marriage mm -hmm. it goes out the window when you mm -hmm. say I can't pray for my spouse mm -mm -mm. would you pray for someone else on the street that harmed you some people wouldn't would you pray I mean so it's it's a relationship that needs to be built and so I think the challenge for, for a lot of couples is that I, I'm not going to bring prayer in this. I'm not going to bring fasting in this because it has nothing to do with this issue right now. Right. It ain't going to change nothing. Well, and it does because if you think about it, marriage is the first covenant relationship God created. Yet people's hearts have become so hardened they don't want to pray. But it was a covenant that God created. This is our statue. What's in the big box? Oh, the big box. You want to see the big box? Okay. You want to go over the statue? Yeah, I want to see what the big. I want to see what's in the big box. So the big box. Okay, talk to me. What's that? One plus one equals three. Sometimes we get caught up in two. We have to have the nice things in life. Mm. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with having the nice things in life, but... So does it represent a car? A car. A nice car? A car. So we get caught up into things that would keep us occupied other mm -hmm. than each other. Mm -hmm. We think that the accolades, which are good. I'm mm -hmm. not knocking accolades. We think we should tr strive for success and go after your dreams and, and accomplish things in life. But will it be at the expense of your marriage? Mm. You know, just just the the things that are chasing awards and fame and fame and the titles and fortune and, 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 and I'm going to be in school forever and get all the degrees I can get. And again, I'm not knocking that. I think it's important. It's very important. But there's a there needs to be an understanding spiritually on how will that impact my marriage. Are we on the same yeah. page with going to get these things and do? Are they going to bid it? Am I able to give this car away if I have to? Right. And and am I using it in a way that would be a blessing to someone else? How about that? You know, am I going to give somebody a ride in it? Right. Or do I just like looking at it shiny right. and clean? If a homeless you person know? wanted to ride right. in it and they smell like some straight buckwheats, mm. am I going to let them get in my car? Right. Right. Am I going to bring someone in my home that God has blessed me with it? Oh, I need a place to stay. I think out of our 23 years of marriage, we've had someone live with us. Every year. Every year. Mm hmm every year mm -hmm. and so you know what are we going to do with the degree that we have are we going to go and help someone and change policies and create change in life or are we going to say so is it just so that you can say you have it right <laughs> i'm coming out <laughs> i want the world to know it's an inside joke so so just be mindful oh, of that Lord. last but not least these are distractions these are Distractions. This good, is a this is good a illustration, honey. This is a statue. Very good illustrations. Thank you. Use my gift wrapping paper. Yeah, and I did that myself. Mm -hmm. So this is this is uh, our statue. Mm. This and is old. We've had this as long as we've been married, twenty three years, and it's all cracked up. We didn't we didn't want to throw it away when it broke. We moved and it broke, and Derek glued it, and you can see all the glue. But it, it represents, uh, uh, it, it represents uh, uh. most marriages. Hey, look at that. Look at it. <laughs> it represents most marriages. It represents that you're going to go through stuff and it's going to drop and it's going to break. And it's going to mm. go into pieces. But you got to get some glue uh -huh. and glue that thing back. Uh -huh. It doesn't look the same. There's a lot of scars. Uh. There's a lot of pain, chip paint. But the reality is that that's marriage. But they're still together, you see? Man and woman, they're still together, even with the scars and the chips. Yeah. So we gave you a lot of information um, about the importance of spiritual 
um, awakening, uh -huh. spiritual maturity, spiritual understanding, who God is in your marriage, what is marriage in regards to all the distractions that may take place in your life. Don't forget that this is a spiritual institution and God wants you to respond to these things from a spiritual perspective. And we challenge you this week to just get rid of one or two things that may be distracting you from your marriage and make a decision that for the next seven days you're going to pay attention to your spouse in some way that you may have missed doing it. That's your challenge this week. Um, and you'll be able to hear from God what it is you've missed if you just stop to listen. So marriage is a spiritual entity. It was created by the Creator. Satan hates what God creates. So now that you know what you're going to do with it. it. So this was a sobering episode, but we hope that it was helpful. And thank you for watching. Until next time, take good care of yourself. Say that I have a good husband. He can get on my nerves. He can be a little puckered. But my husband single-handedly Help me move my parents this weekend. I didn't see one. You helped me. Oh, baby, you put the brawn. You did all of that brawn. I organized the move. He does the lifting and the, the, the detaching and the reconnect. We got to go and reconnect everything we just detached. And he's going to do that. He's already parent-proofed the house. New shower heads and locks on the doors and Alexa playing for them. And, I mean, y'all, marriage... It's sacrifice, and I mean, he, he, those aren't his parents. Those are my parents. And he still did that as though they were his. So I, I, that's all I got to say. Well, when I said I do 23 years ago, I didn't know that I would be doing this. Mercy. <laughs> I mean, when I said I do, I wasn't thinking about this 23 years later or the other stuff that we've gone, to, gone through throughout our marriage. So we don't, you don't think about it. When you say I do, and that's why we're talking about this vlog, uh, about the spiritual component. Understanding when you said I do, you said I do to a spiritual commitment. And everything else after that that happens, if you're not spiritually in tune and understand who God is, and understand what faith really is, and understand what selflessness is, and understand what, um, just understand what God expects you in your marriage, then you ain't going to make it. Just know that look at your marriage and, and just really do a, a self check and say spiritually we ain't there but we got to get there and we're not there we got work to do uh -huh. but it required us to be spiritually understanding that this is my role uh -huh. and so anyway. well I do it for you I do it for, oh, yeah. I do it for my mom my mother-in-law and my father-in-law's past but I would do it for them you would because if not for them he wouldn't even be here you know they're the root of who we are but this place is stinky, so. Yes, yes.